Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad. Welcome back brothers and sisters. We continue with the 17th point uh, in regards to ibadah and tips on raising the children. Uh, Insha'Allah ta'ala. Uh, Ibrahim bin Adham used to say to his uh, son, uh, he said, قَالَ لِي أَبِي يَا بُنَيْ اطْلُبْ الْحَدِيثِ فَكُلَّمَا سَمِعْتَ حَدِيثًا وَحَفِظْتَهُ فَلَكَ دِرْهَمْ He used to say to his son, uh, seek knowledge of hadith, and every time he would get a hadith and memorize it, he would give him, let's say, a dollar, a dirham. And so you can actually reward children uh, by memorizing the Quran, you give him rewards. I, I personally have done that. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a nice, a very good incentive. If you complete such and such, then you give him a hefty reward. That will keep him motivated. And of course, it doesn't interfere with the niyyah. Uh, especially at, at a young age, but you know, while you teach him ikhlas and you teach him sincerity and you teach him aqidah, then they will understand that things are done ultimately for the sake of Allah and not for the gift. You have to make that reminder and disclaimer nevertheless. 18th, don't burden them however with the memorization uh, where, to the point where they dislike the Quran. Okay, so you have to be also moderate in the uh, requirement and the expectation you have from them. 19th, you have to be an example for your children if you become negligent regarding prayers uh, and, and ibadah, then they will be the same. So we ask Allah to rectify our condition and make us good examples for them. Uh, 20th point is train your child to uh, pay uh, from the money that they have, to, to give charity, to spend in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and by either doing it in front of them and telling them about the virtue or giving them the money and have it, give it to uh, the miskeen. Involve them in the act so they can become familiar with it and teach them about the virtue of sadaqah and the importance and, and you can also teach them about being selective. Selective in the sense that you should aim to give your money to, you, to those who you think are most worthy and deserving. Sometimes you know, people give money to the wrong recipients uh, who go and buy a pack of cigarettes with them. So be careful of those people that beg for money but are actually not entitled to that money and try to find the qualified people that would uh, you know, be more deserving and they will benefit from that and they will use it in getting closer to Allah not to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course there's a lot more but we're trying to be brief. We're going to jump to the topic of akhlaq, al-akhlaq or in the morals and the character. Uh, the 21st point is uh, you have to uh, instill honesty uh, and sincerity and truthfulness uh, in your children. Uh, so, you, you know, for them to be able to tell you the truth, they can't be afraid of you. And that's a mistake that we all fall into, speaking of myself. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we scare them and so they wind up lying. Uh, there should be an open channel of communication. There should be trust so that the children can admit. And when they admit, the 22nd point is, um, you be honest first and then the children will follow suit. Um, so again, being an example in that sense to the children. The 23rd point is, explain to the child the virtue of uh, honesty and uh, trustworthiness and being actually, when entrusted with something, to fulfill it. And that's a very important lesson. You know, some children, for example, they may borrow a toy from, from one of their friends and they're completely negligent of that. So you, you interfere and you tell them about the importance of when being entrusted with something that they live up to this trust and that they look after their stuff and they look after their toys and they look after their friends toys um, that's that's an important quality a lot of children unfortunately are just uh, destructive uh, you know machines on the go anything that they come across they break and they say uh, it's Chinese product it breaks that's not true there's a lot of Chinese products that have lasted a long time uh, 24 <laughs> I'm not taking a swap. <laughs> 24. Um, test your child without him knowing. Um, you know, set up a, some sort of a, uh, a plan or a plot to see whether they are reliable, whether they're trustworthy or not. Some people have installed uh, CCTV cameras in their house, and then once they're gone, they can see what the children have done in their absence. Yeah. 25th point. Uh, teach your child how to be patient. Um, and, and, you know, patience is a virtue. A lot of children are impatient. I want to ride the car now. I want to ride the car now. I want to ride the car on the rooftop. I want to do this. I want to do that. And then they keep nagging and nagging for a long time. It's not going to get them anywhere. If they're patient, they will be rewarded accordingly. If they're impatient, they will be punished accordingly. That's just life. 
Uh, you have to be uh, fair between your children, and you have to teach them justice. A lot of people have a misconception about that. Um, sometimes fairness it doesn't mean the equality. Okay? For example, one of the kids likes uh, chicken shawarma, and the other one likes meat shawarma. You cannot say, well, to be just, everybody has to eat chicken shawarma because I cannot be unjust with my children. Um, no. Maybe one of them wants a hamburger, the other one wants a shawarma, no problem. Justice is that you don't make one of them feel special and the other ones feel different. However, some children, uh, some children themselves treat their parents a certain way that will create a, a, a positive reaction and an affection towards them. And so that's not a problem of the parent anymore. That's something that children have to be aware of, especially as they grow older. Their actions necessitate, uh, you know, the, the, the parents' uh, love and affection. So there's an effort on the part of the children they have to make uh, so that, the, 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 you know, the parents make it easy. It, make it makes it easier for the parents to treat them justly, even in terms of showing love and affection. Uh, the 27th point is uh, teach a child uh, the concept of ethar. And ethar is altruism. Uh, how to be an altruist, how to favor others over themselves. Um, and that's very important between the siblings. A lot of the siblings are all, you know, it's, it's about me, myself, and I. And then everybody else can just, you know, mashallah, figure it out. No, no, it's, it's nice that the children lo learn how to say, no, you know what, I want to eat this, you go ahead and eat it. Or I want to play with this, no, you go ahead and play first. So the children have to be taught this concept of altruism. And once taught, they're expected to act upon it, inshallah. Um, 28, tell the children about the negativity of um, cheating and lying and stealing and hacking. Yeah. A lot of children are happy with some of the skills that they acquire, even though these skills are evil in Islam. And so, yeah, you know, uh, they have to be told about these things. And once they're told, Allah gave them uh, intelligence uh, and they should be intelligent enough to understand the lesson. Because, uh, you know, tricking people or, or stealing from them uh, may make you look smart, but on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, you will feel quite the opposite. So beware, young kids. And the 29th point is, if your child displays some sort of courage on a particular day, give him thumbs up and give him props and, and, and praise him for that. Whenever your child does something good, let them know that you've identified it, that you recognize it, that you appreciate it. It will go a long way. And so with this we will conclude inshallah. In the, few, in the upcoming episodes there's more to discuss. Zakum la khair for your uh, attendance or for paying attention. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.